Folks, today we're going to be talking pallet forks, and specifically how long a forks are best for a subcompact tractor. Ooh, these are cold. Get warm forks, at least in the winter. Anyway, there are a lot of opinions on this, and I'm going to show you a couple of reasons why folks sometimes recommend longer pallet forks, the 42 inch variety, and then I'm going to show you seven reasons why I like the shorter ones. Purely opinion on all this. Let's don't divide over this issue. If you like the longer ones, that's great. I'm just giving you some food for thought. I've got three unique forks mounted on my Artillion fork frame. This is a three by 36, a three by 42. And I thought I had 48 inch forks for Johnny Five. Well, it turns out they are four by 42s. I was surprised by that. I never even measured them. I just thought they were 48s before. I wanted you to visually be able to see the difference. Now, the first thing I want to point out is, is that for a subcompact tractor, there is no use for a four inch wide fork. It's much heavier. There's no use whatsoever for this uh, uh, wider fork, that, at least that I can come up with. For a subcompact tractor or even a two series tractor or a B series uh, Kubota, three inch wide is all you'll ever need. Now the image quality is not gonna be great here because I'm looking through the cab window. But right there is typically where my head is when I'm setting upright in my cab. The forks are essentially on the floor. Now when I lean forward, you can see that the leftmost fork is easier to see. The tip of that fork is easier to see than the right fork. The left is the 42. There's one reason why folks like the longer forks. I find that when I'm in a situation like that, I typically stand up uh, to look at the forks anyway, or at least lean way forward. So I, I, it doesn't bother me that bad. I would say that visibility of pallet forks is, is one of the bigger challenges, especially on the larger tractors. I find that even Johnny 2 has reduced visibility of the forks over Johnny. Um, just because the hood is bigger. I also find that I can look alongside the tractor to get some visibility of the forks. Depending on the left and right position of the forks, that's sometimes easier than not. Okay. So visibility is one area where longer forks seem to help. It's easier to see them over the hood of the tractor. The next two points I'm gonna show are points that a lot of folks use for wanting longer forks but I'm gonna say for me, they don't really apply. So this is reason number one of why I prefer the 36 inch forks. And that is that for a, a standard size pallet, even a pretty good sized pallet, this one's 47 inches wide, 36 inch fork is fine. I've got it shoved, let's see, I'm gonna to try to pull it out an inch or so because the top board doesn't come in like it should. Um, the 42 inch pallet fork ends right here. The 36 inch, ends right about here. So it still sticks through plenty far. Uh, a lot of uh, viewers, a lot of users say that they really like that fork sticking through a little bit further. It makes perfect sense to me, but I've never found it to be an issue. That's reason number one why I like the shorter pallet fork. I'm gonna slide the pallet out here a little bit. Assuming a centered load, this is about as far out as we could carry that pallet. So reason number two for me preferring the shorter forks and reason number three for some folks preferring the longer forks is they want to be able to put it in a truck bed and they want to be able to get a pallet all the way to the front of their truck bed and they are afraid they don't have reach. One thing I've noticed is these subcompact tractors have a lot more forward reach than a regular forklift. Uh, so some of the length of the pallet forks is not as relevant. Uh, for instance, I've got seven feet right here from the front of this pallet uh, to the front of the tractor. That's a rough measurement. For my six and a half foot bed on my F-350, uh, it'll reach almost to the front. Of course, there's a couple foot tailgate there. It won't quite reach all the way. Once I set the pallet down, I can back up another foot or so, pick it up again a little bit and skid it in just a little bit further. Um, I usually have no issue getting a pallet all the way to the front of my F-350. 
to the front of an eight-foot bed, you'd have to set it all the way down and then push on one of these uh, vertical boards here to, uh, to push it all the way in. Well, how about getting it out of the truck, Tim? You've, you've, you've talked about how you can get it in, but getting it out. Well, the way I get it out is I'd hook a chain to it uh, right around one of these and pull it backwards until I could reach it with the forks. I've had to do that on uh, a tractor trailer that's been delivering product here. Sometimes uh, they're parked way up front and they can't get their little inside dolly uh, back around to, to help. So I've actually had to take a chain and, and pull a pallet uh, nearly from the front of the trailer to the back of the trailer. So it can be done. That's how I do it. Still, I understand why people think the extra six inches may help and it would help a little bit, but I don't really notice it. Reason number three that I prefer short pallet forks, the 36 inch variety. It's maneuverability in tight spaces. Now, it's actually two aspects to this. One is the ability to turn your tractor. Um, perhaps you're outside, you're, you're, you're in a fenced area and you need to turn it and you can't quite reach, you're using your forks there. Another thing is you might need to back out of your load, okay? So I'll illustrate that right here. If I pull this pallet off, imagine me backing the tractor out instead of pulling the pallet off. I'm already out of it on the 36 inch side, but I still have to back up further. Sometimes that extra six inches that you have to back up to get out of the pallet makes the job very difficult. Reason number four, I'm gonna call this one increased dumping height. Yeah, I know that's probably, uh, <laughs> doesn't make much sense, especially when you see this with this pallet. I'm gonna to try to illustrate it with the pallet, um, but it's actually not applicable to pallets. I found before I had my grapple, I used my forks for brush removal and carrying brush all the time. Oftentimes I would get a load of brush in the fork. When I wanted to deliver them to the brush pile, I had trouble releasing them because I would turn my forks down and I couldn't get up out of the pile high enough. Now that's even with the 36 inch forks. So this is as high as the 1025R loader will lift, the boom. And if you'll notice, this side of the fork is already released from the load. That side of the fork is still in the load. So with a longer fork, you're closer to the ground when you're trying to dump a load that's kind of sticky in your, in your forks or into a pile that's kind of uh, sticky. I hope you understand what I mean by sticky. Hopefully the videos you're seeing here uh, make that more clear. Reason number four, increased dumping height. Martha, I can't really show anything with you standing there. Reason number five, lighter weight. If you'll notice on the 36 inch, the, the tip actually seems to be a little bit thinner. And the extra length is all the thickest part here on the 42. This results in eight pounds extra for a pair of forks, four pounds each. That's not a lot, but remember these subcompact tractors don't lift much. If you pair the 36 by three forks, um, which weigh 112 pounds with the 2300 pound capacity fork frame, that's only 73 pounds the frame is. So you have 180, that's just so many numbers. When paired with the uh, lightest weight artillion frame, still plenty of capacity for a subcompact tractor, even up to a three series actually, the fork set and the frame are 185 pounds together. It's the lightest one on the market, certainly for a three series, 2,300 pound capacity with that combination. Now you only save eight pounds against the 42 by three forks, but if you go to the four inch forks, four inch by 48s are 180 pounds for a pair. Like I said before, I don't see any need for four inch forks on a subcompact, even up to a three, inch, three series tractor. Reason number six and seven, <laughs> they sort of tie together. It has to do with leverage. We've talked at length in other episodes about just how these subcompact loaders aren't very strong. And yet you've seen us do a lot of work with them. Well, 
part of the reason we can do so much work, even with the relatively weak hydraulics that a subcompact tractor of any brand, by the way, has, is how we put the thought into maximizing what leverage we have. So when we get longer forks, anytime we get our load further away from the tractor, we get weaker. I don't know what the cat has to do with it, but take off. <laughs> I find a lot of situations where I need to use the tip of the fork to lift something. Maybe not exactly the tip, but the first few inches of the fork. I need to stick in something and, and, and lift, pry up with that. Well, we lose a lot of that capacity with just an additional six inches of fork. And I'm trying to illustrate that here. I really had trouble coming up with a, a way to measure this, but I think I've got it, uh, I'm, I've got my auto lift here. By the way, if you haven't seen our auto lift, check out our two episodes we have on it. One, the install. Not only do we have the auto lift, we have the turf rail, which allows us to, to put our tractors on there without, well, worrying too much about the size. You can just drive it right up on there. It works great. So far, I really love it. I'm going to use the same fork here for both of my lifting tests. This is going to be the one that would be equivalent to the 36 inch length. And I'm just going to try to lift it relatively straight up. And then I'm going to try to not unhook the chain. I'll back the tractor up just a few inches, not unhook the chain so that I don't change any links or anything. It's not scientific. You get the point. Um, and then I'll see if there is any decrease in lift capacity at that length. I'll zero the scale here now. Six hundred pounds even. Again, this is not perfect. I understand that. I'm going to try to put this right out on the tip. And we'll try this again. I'm not adjusting the curl at all. This is purely lift. Five hundred and forty eight pounds. I repeated this test several times and I always got basically a fifty pound difference. So even though the chain looks a little bit different and it, it, you know again it's not scientific, but the idea is that we lose ten percent of our leverage here from here to here uh, lifting. So a shorter fork is going to make it seem like your tractor can lift more. Kind of fascinating. In general, the rule is keep it close to the tractor. Keep it close to the tractor. It makes a major difference. If we put another six inches out there, it would, it would be even worse. So, yeah. Now, reason number seven. Very, very similar to number six. Before I had the grapple especially, I like to use the forks to dig. I still do occasionally. They're very handy to dig. Well, it hampers your leverage. To, to dig in with these longer forks. In fact, for digging, I'd love to have some shorter forks. Uh, I used to see some that were 24 inches long. I think those would be fabulous for digging. Unfortunately, they wouldn't be long enough for a lot of the other work that we do. So, the same idea is you lose your leverage while digging, just like you do while you're lifting. Okay, so there you have it, the definitive guide to choosing the proper fork length. <laughs> Yeah, right. Anyone, I'll, I'll say something equally as crazy. Anyone who purchases 42 inch forks now after this incredible explanation, well, they end up with 42 inch forks. <laughs> this is not an area of, of, of strong uh, passion. It's just my experiences. I hope you've found it enjoyable. Um, I hope you find it input, because it is hard to make a decision like this. So, hey, we'll see you at the farm show, February 12th to 15th, each day, 11 a.m. at the deer booth. And on Thursday evening, I believe that's the 13th, um, we'll be at WW Cousins at 7 p.m. And hope to see you there for a cheeseburger. Let us know in the comments section if you can make it. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.
really care, do you? You seem pretty safe. You seem to think you're pretty safe. Hey, them's my isotunes. You gotta be careful with them. You see yourself there? That's interesting. That guy looks just like you.